Hello and welcome to yet another video about the Canon EOS R5 in which we're going to look at image quality and yeah, this time the focus will be on the R5's high ISO performance. Again comparing it against my 5DSR which I used for many years now. I know exactly what I can do with that camera and yeah now I'm interested how I can push farther. So what the R5 delivers if it's better. I hope so yeah. So we're gonna see we do some pixel peeping and yeah, let's just jump right into it. So let's now start the high ISO comparison with a little experiment. So I have here both cameras next to each other. They were both scaled to the same size. So it's a fair comparison of the ISO capabilities. And yeah, what I want you to do now, I show you some areas of the image. And yeah, I want you to decide which side you like more. So which side in terms of noise and maybe detail does look better for you. So this is the first area. So just take a few seconds, look at it, decide which side you like more, and then we move on to another area. So next we have the ship here with a lot of detail and then the ocean around it. So some plain areas, some detailed areas. And finally, I have some shadow areas for you, which is usually a place where you can very quickly see the noise in images. Okay, so did you make a decision? First of all, how do you like the noise in both images? Do you think it's a good amount of noise or do you think it's already very bad? First of all, I have to tell you, this comparison was done at 200%. So if I zoom out and go to 100, you already see a lot less noise, I'd say. So now decide, okay, is this a good amount of noise? How do you like the results? Which side do you like more? Yeah, now I want to tell you which is which. So on the left side here, it's actually the R5. On the right side, it's the 5DSR. So did you think the R5 has a better amount of noise or the 5DSR? Now, the next thing I want to reveal here is the ISO I used. The 5DSR is actually at ISO 800 and the R5 was at ISO 1600. So one complete stop more. And for me, I'd say both look fairly similar. I'd say in the brighter areas, the R5 might be a little bit more noisy, but just a touch. But in the dark areas and the shadow areas, I found the 5DSR to show a bit more noise, which is also what we saw in my last video where I showed the ISO invariance. And I found that the R5 has yeah, much more room to play, much more wiggle room in the dark areas than the 5DSR. And yeah, I think this is also apparent here when you look at the high ISO noise. So left side R5, ISO 1600, right side 5DSR, ISO 800. Now let's look at a few other images and yeah, continue the comparison and also go through the complete ISO range. So for the following tests, I didn't rescale the 5DSR image to match the R5 image. The difference is just a few megapixels, but yeah, it's not 100% accurate anymore then. But for our tests here, I think it's sufficient and it's also quicker for me to go through the images here in Lightroom. So I picked the ISO 1600 versus ISO 800 test for the start because this is what I usually had as the boundary if I shot landscape. So with the 5DSR, I would go not more than ISO 800 if I wanted to freeze some motion in leaves or something. And with this test, I just want to see, okay, could I now go to 1600 with the R5 and get the same amount of noise? And yeah, for me, that's very important now because this means with the new system, I can freeze motion even more by getting comparable amount of noise in the images. So if you have moving leaves or something, this will be very helpful. Now, the next thing here, I have the comparison. The max ISO on the 5DSR is actually 6400. And to be honest, I think I only used it once when I was shooting some Milky Way. Most of the time I would rather use 3200 as a maximum ISO because I think 64 didn't look very good. But again, I want to see if also here I could get one more stop. So using on the R5, 12,800. So let's zoom in and have a quick look. And here in the dark tones, again, it looks very, very similar, I'd say. So there's a lot of noise in both of those, but remember this one here is at 12,800. And here up here in the detailed areas, you also see the noise, but at least the colors, they still look 
quite okay. There's not too much color bleeding also here in the flags. I think you could also say in this area it's nearly one stop better than the 5DSR. Now what I want to show you how would it look and we not compare now we just look at the images for the R5 if you go up from 12.8 to 25,000 so 25,600 and this is when you see this color bleeding so the colors are no longer very defined they bleed into each other you lose the definition and this for me also around those flags here it's also not very good anymore this for me would be nice so I would never use I think so let's compare 12.8 versus 25,000 so you better see what I mean here so here on the right side it's 12,800 and here on the left side it's the 25,000 and just look at how the colors here the red and the blue it's not very good anymore so here there's a mixture of the blues and the yellows so I would never use this in a shot I think this would be completely unusable yeah, and as we continue up to 51,000 and um, this gets even worse so here on the right side actually we now have 51,000 ISO and there's nothing I would ever print and also even in the small version it doesn't look so good so if you're just after an Instagram shot I think you could do this but for me as a landscape photographer who likes to print his images this is nothing I'll ever use so let's instead again look once more at the ISO 6400 and this time have it on both sides so there are five ISO 6400 5 DSR and see how much of an improvement it is actually here especially here in the dark so if you shoot the night sky you have a very dark sky you get much less noise and yeah also overall it's much cleaner and yeah why is this important I want to show you a use case where I shot with a 5DSR in Morocco taking photo of the Milky Way and I had really maxed out the 5DSR so I had ISO 6400 back then I had the Canon 1635 lens which just went up to f4 so I really maxed it out to get as much light as possible and yeah let's have a look and I show you the noise levels so this is what I got at let's see we were at 15 seconds which was the maximum time I could go at the 60 millimeters without getting trailing stars I mean you'll often hear the 500 rule being used to calculate the maximum exposure time you can use without showing any trailing in the stars so if you want to have pinpoint stars you have to go with shorter exposures but I don't use the 500 rule for me it's much shorter so what I calculate with the 500 rule I usually divide by two to get my maximum exposures so for example if you use photopulse and their calculator you get a much more accurate representation of what you really have to use to get pinpoint stars so stars which show no trailing and that's important if you print large like I do so I zoom in now and show you the noise I had to deal with in that image so there's quite a lot of it but also I still have all the stars I have some of the nebulas here so it looks quite good so if I can now shoot with the R5 at those settings and get less noise half the noise roughly this will be great also I now have the RF 1535 2.8 lens which allows me to go to even shorter exposures so everything will improve and there's still a lot of noise and I want to also share with you a little trick you can use to create clean images because as you see here down here I took many many photos all behind each other so I think I took 40 photos with the same settings and what I did later I stacked those and used noise reduction by just averaging out the noise and I have a complete tutorial on that where I go into the detail and show you how I created the final photo which looks like this here so this photo shows no noise at all or nearly no noise and I can print it like 36 inch you can look at it very closely you see the Milky Way it just looks awesome yeah I have a complete tutorial on that but back to the camera so the R5 is significantly better in terms of high ISO performance than the 5DSR which is great for me unfortunately though I couldn't compare it to a Sony or a Nikon which I expect to have similar performance so for this I think you need to have a look at DP review where they have some photo comparisons where you could even look at the RAWs I for one thing I'm happy with that just knowing that it's much better than the 5DSR 
which is what I used for five years. And that's the most important comparison for me personally, because I know how to use the 5DSR. I'm so used to it. I'm used to all the boundaries. And now I wanted just to see how I can now extend those boundaries. All the tests I did till now with the long exposure noise, the ISO invariance, and now the high ISO were focused on that, just giving me a good assessment as a preparation for now heading out into the field or into the cities, into the landscape with this camera and taking photos. And yeah, that's important to know beforehand what you can do with your equipment and not just going out and then having maybe some special light, some once in a lifetime moment of light even coming back and then realizing that yeah you push the camera maybe too far there's too much noise the images are unusable so that's why i do all those tests here in the office which is kind of boring also for me but i think it's important because i just want to know how far i can go with the camera where the limitations are for example the long exposure stuff it's very important to know okay now going beyond two minutes i definitely have to switch on long exposure noise reduction or if i stay beneath that i can get along without stuff like that, how the ISO performance is, that's very important. And there's yet one more test from the office to come. I want to look at the resolution at base ISO and actually compare it to the 5TSR. Till now, the 5TSR with its 50 megapixels, it was the king on Canon's side in terms of resolution. And I always like the detail I got from it. And I now want to see what the drop in resolution on the first thing, so the five megapixels, and also the fact that the R5 has an anti-aliasing filter and not a cancelling filter like the 5DSR, how this impacts the details. So I compare first with the same lens, the 1635 on both cameras, and then I'll also use the IF lens on the R5 and see if the system as a whole performs equally well or even better, we don't know yet, than the 5DSR before. So I'd suspect that the 5TSR will still have a little edge over the R5, but I hope they'll be very close and I can get comparable results. So that's for the next video. Till then, I hope you like this one. Make sure to subscribe and yeah, see you soon. Bye.